So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's Friday. It's the 9th of June, 2023. And once again, we want to prepare for the Fed. Upcoming week, we'll have a rate decision. And I think... I think it's a done deal that we'll get to see 25. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, that we don't get a rate hike anymore. And we will see a pause. Um, there was speculation. We will make this a topic in a few minutes here. Um, that uh, the Fed will hike another 25 basis points, which came as a surprise. Um, and and um, I, or we know that due to the so-called Fed watch tool. Um, and it's surprising. It's very surprising, in fact, um, that there was this speculation. Since um, I think the rhetoric which was used from the Fed here um, earlier in May, the last meeting when we saw the last rate hike of 25 basis points, it was quite clear that they said, well, we will pause now also and mainly due to the tensions which we get to see in the banking sector here. Um, and that being said, well, I mean, um, it's it's surprising to see that there's still a likelihood of 25 basis points. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 25 um, percent. The market participants are still expecting the Fed to um, uh, hike by 25 basis points. I think mainly this is um, for hedging purposes. I think this is a hedge uh, from some market participants here, um, just in case. Let's put it that way. Um, I could imagine if they hike another 25 basis points, then we get a real sellout uh, in in equities, especially. But too much uh, right here. First of all, let's um, introduce um, um, Admirals as a broker. Uh, here, you are the YouTube channel from Admirals. So, if you haven't yet, please subscribe, um, leave a like if you if you uh, like um, what you will see here in the upcoming minutes. If you have questions, feel free to ask them right here in the event. Or um, if you're watching the recording on YouTube, then please uh, comment and um, I will answer the questions. And beside of that, um, um, also um, click the notify button, so the the the, the bell, so that it rings once uh, a video appears um, here on, in the channel from admirals so that you don't miss any of the videos which we're you here producing for you and um, what i want to do now is share my screen and um, head over here to the presentation first of all very important um so the risk disclaimer um we are trading leverage products here and uh, what i present to you now in the upcoming minutes is for educational purposes only so I will give you my view on the current situation. I will also make um, several assets a topic, which I think will be of interest, not just um, at the FAT meeting itself, but also in addition uh, to that, no, already right here. Um, and I could imagine that probably in the S&P, we will get to, to see some, some interesting, some interesting uh, price action probably. Um, and I will tell you why I expect this, in fact. But if you have any assets um, you want to see me covered here um, um, and, and and you say, well, this is something I have on my radar, uh, but I don't know yet how to interpret potential uh, trade um, 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 developments here on the news itself, feel free to ask these questions. Again, I will present to you the game plan coming back to the risk disclaimer. Um, I will give you some thoughts, some food for thought probably um, to, to think about it and, and, and to probably formulate your own trading hypothesis and then trade on your own. So it's not financial advice I'm giving you here. Um, uh, but but it's um just for educational purposes again leverage products involve risks which may not be suitable for all investors since uh, or due to that please um not just um 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 find your your personal risk profile but also work together with an independent financial advisor to find out whether these products suit your risk profile and then take it from there um full risk disclaimer can be found at um admiralmarkets.com there you can also download a demo and test um uh, the trading with these leverage products in a demo um environment in a simulated environment if you want and then see whether your risk profile corresponds with um with with the risk profile which is um um, um inherently connected uh to to um leverage products like cfds and fx um also, uh, let me introduce Admirals as a mar um, um, as a, as a makler. <laughs> German work for broker is makler <laughs> um, as a broker. So, um, in the industry for over twenty years now, uh, fully licensed by several um, regulatory bodies around the globe, um, SISEC here in Europe, but also in addition to that in the UK via the FCA in Australia via the ASIC. Then there's also a Jordan um, um, regulatory body overseeing uh, Admirals business. Also, check out the website for 
finding all regulatory bodies overseeing admirals and also contact the service um, if you have any questions. What's the difference? Um, you might be surprised, let's say. Um, very, very competitive offering when it comes um, to DAX trading, especially with one point spread um, during the main trading hours. This is very interesting. Um, it's, 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 there's few brokers out there having a better, a more competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading. So I'm located in Berlin in Germany. So that means um, we are here mainly focused on the DAX. Find out more about DAX trading with Admirals. Again, check out the website um, and you'll, you'll be positively surprised. Um, one world, one broker. Um, but what we want to know do now right here is uh, jump right into the action and have a look here at the Fed meeting next week. And what I usually prepare, um, what you what you might have found already, but I haven't prepared anything more than that, is um, the look at the Fed watch tool um, just for um, information purposes and what this is. But respectively, let me probably head over here um, to whoop, the Fed watch tool. Let me share the link. One second, please. I think it depends. Um, this is an interesting question uh, from, from Jared. Um, Jared asking, uh, trading is super tough right now. I think it depends on the assets um, you're, you're currently watching. So to be honest, um, when looking at the DAX, so let's probably head over to the DAX to, to answer the question. Um, when looking here at what the DAX is delivering, well, I'm on your side. I say, well, this is like, what the... This is this is really ridiculous, and we're trading here in a very very narrow tight range between fifteen thousand nine hundred on the downside and sixteen thousand one hundred on the upside. Hopefully, we'll get to see um um some kind of a of a of an impulse um with the Fed then. But given this picture here, yes, in DAX it's very very tough. But and this is the thing, um you probably have followed um. Last week or two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, the quest or the 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 um, 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 hot stocks webinar I was running two weeks ago with the trading a life account, and um, we were focusing here on a on a stock um, AAP for example. I have, I mean, somewhere I read about it, but I, I really had to look up what are they doing. They delivered earnings, was a catastrophic um, um, earnings release. They delivered very weak guidance. They were um, selling with with um, um, uh, a negative, I think a negative profit margin, if I'm not mistaken. So really, really, really bad. And the interesting thing about this is, um, it's not just that it gap massively down on on the news release, but in addition to that, um, it also became aware. If you checked out the the the, the fundamentals behind um, the stock, so checking here Finwis here as a as a free tool, um, you go to AAP and then you 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 find out. Well, here there we go. So this is the gap down, as you can see here. And then you can see 97% institutional ownership. So just imagine you're an institution. Just imagine you're um, holding stock here in AAP, and then they deliver such a weak guidance and such a weak earnings release in general. If you get this, well, you want out of this stock. You need liquidity. Um, and all market participants who are watching the stock know that you want out of this stock. So then you have other ideas. So for example, you see, okay, shares roll is... 50, 60 million, it's not the most liquid stock out there. Um, but if you have 60 million shares and an institutional ownership here of 97%, that's like, let me just calculate this one second. So 60 multiplied with 097. So 58 million shares um, are in the hands of institutions. They want out. So then you see, okay, average daily trading volume for the last three months, you have around 2 million shares. Again, 58 million shares shorted I'm, I'm sorry i'm hold it by institutions um and you have an average daily trading volume of two million so now this is like they're they're pressing for the exit but there's no one bidding for the stock why well because they just had a very weak guidance very weak earnings release Given that, well, you see that there was a very nice downtrend with a gap lower from 112. So we already gapped something like 25, 30% or so. And then from 80, we continue to trade continuously lower. So there was a nice trend developing. Um, and so if you if you trade stocks like this, who have a fresh news catalyst, um, given the current environment, so this is AAP, for example, um, the current environment, let me just see here. 
Did you see what, what Tesla just delivered yesterday? No big surprise for long-term Tesla investors, I think. Um, but here you can see that there was a, a Twitter space with um, 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 Murray Barra, the CEO from General Motors and Elon Musk yesterday. And what you can see here is they have reached an agreement for GM to adopt Tesla's North American charging standard and provide GM customers access to over 12K Tesla superchargers around the US uh, and Canada. This is very hot news for, for Tesla stock. Tesla's just gapping up. You can see this here in the pre-market. Um, you can see it here. Gapping up 6% to 250 with already 7.8 million shares being traded. And, and we're going really like parabolic. Let me just check out here the Tesla chart. So you can see we are very already very extended on the upset, but still we have some room to go probably to close the gap. So wh why do I make this a topic and why do I bring this up here? Well, I think it depends on what market you're currently watching. Um, or put it differently, um, as a trader, you can only be as good as the market you're trading, and in this case, as the stock you're trading. So only focusing, let's say, on the S&P, on NASDAQ, on the DAX, stock like Apple or whatever, um, won't cut it in the long run. Because um, if you're a super talented, great trader, you, you can't trade as well um, in an environment which is like, like here, watching, 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 um, 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 Paint dry is it is it correct in English too? So in Germany we have a saying um, a Farbe beim Trocknen zu gucken. So it's like you 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 look at a wall which was freshly painted and then you um, watch the paint dry. So and and this is just like well you, you if you're talented as if you're a talented trader if you really know what you're doing you won't make much money probably you make some if you're if you're good but you won't make much money in this environment. While if you if you focus on markets which are in play, which are moving, which have fresh catalysts, they increase the likelihood of you being successful and 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 bringing your talent to work and and and, and trade. So depends a little on if if you say, well, look at the DAX, this is like annoying. Yes, one hundred percent. Look at the Nasdaq. Same is true for index in general. Um, I mean, we had a strong run higher, but now we're consolidating here some kind of volatility let's say um on wednesday if we break below 14200 well nice then we probably have further room on the downside to go to test this 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 um, um lower lower trend line here around 14000 um we didn't break we bounced yesterday um we didn't break below 15900 in the dax we bounced today again um but there are markets moving in this case and um so and and that, that's that, that's that's my point. So it depends a little on what market you are watching right now. In fact, I wouldn't focus on a marketplace. And the reason for that is because the volatility index right now is below um, twenty points. So the VIX, the, the volatility index on the S and P five hundred, is below 25, uh, 20 points. It's it's a near um, year to date. Um, um, low territory, let's say, um, it's showing that there's not much going on right now. We are we are really desperately waiting for a fresh catalyst macro catalyst in this case with the fat that's why we are focusing on that today um but as long as we stay at these low levels volatility wise marketplace don't seem to be very interesting and you really need to do some let's say cherry picking and look what's moving what's moving why fresh news catalyst and not another example for today for example coming back here to, to us equities it's like docusign docusign just released earnings yesterday um, let's see, they have a very strong resistance on the upside around 67 intraday wise. Let's see if they, um, if we drive above and hold above 63, if so, well, probably there's some momentum place up to 67, um, in addition to, to potential place in, in, in Tesla. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the next question, nine biggest equities are carrying in the rest. Um, so so what you're saying is that Fangman and especially here. So when looking here at this at this heat map, you can see that. So right now it's um I'm grayed out because it's um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the open. Um and, and it has moved today. It will change once you have the market opening. But you can see here, given the market cap, um, the weight of um these players in the market. As you can see, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, Tesla to some extent, I'd say, um, probably some Walmart here. But the the um, uh, these 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 big 
bricks here, let's say, or um, 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 they they are big because they have a huge market cap. So if Apple um, comes out with their Vision Pro on Monday, we're spiking to new all-time highs, rolling over, um, and then dropping, I don't know, below 178 probably. Probably we're about to see some further losses on the downside, um, or losses, well, like corrective move, let's say, um, after it got a little hot on the upside probably that's a probably better way to put it and um um, um healthy corrective move we we are we are seeing there but if you have a big player a market stock like apple well certainly this drags on the overall market in general nasdaq and so on and so forth but and this was something we've seen last week with the non-farm payrolls for example um it was a very strong reaction to that um just coming back here to the chart looking at the s p 500 so you probably um, um, remember we were we were talking about the non-farm payrolls and um, we made higher highs following the NFP. So this is the one hour candle here of the non-farm payrolls and we broke that um, level that was shortly after and then we continued higher. So there was a drive higher. We tested the um, um, NFP highs and then we trended higher and closed very strong for the week. And um, the interesting thing about this was and and now we are coming to your question. If you look here at the NASDAQ the same day, what you can see, let's go to the 30 minute chart, probably a little better. Um, what you can see, let me just see second here. There we go. Look at this candle and then see we didn't make higher highs. So the big tech names you're you're referring to didn't push the market higher, but it was in fact um a rotation into let's call them lagging stocks which haven't yet performed extremely well the tech um, index here was was driving um um what well, has seen a significant strength and, and capital inflows that's why we we accelerated that aggressively on the upside but last week it was some um, mainly driven by energy stocks financials for example we saw some strength there they don't play a role in the nasdaq but they play a role in the s p 500 and that's the reason why the s p 500 was capable of breaking um above the the nfp highs while the nasdaq stayed below that so all in all i would say yes certainly there's a big market cap um, um, um stocks which are holding the market up and you should be aware of them and you should especially be aware of them if if there's fresh news coming like in earnings series and so on and so forth but right now i see a very healthy development to a more broader base of um, equities holding and especially the broad market up like the s p 500 with energy stocks with financials for example Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. So um, the question, um, um, are we about to see um, 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 a corrective move? Probably this is a, a good starting point for, for um, the Fed then next week. Um, probably we, we will get to see a corrective move. Um, I have to say I wouldn't chase up here. Um, but if you follow the webinars here closely, especially with me, you know that I've been bullish for the equity indices, especially the tech sector, <laughs> for quite a while. You probably recall my my quite blunt rhetoric, let's say, when I said, well, look at what's currently bought. People are looking for risk. There has risk appetite in the market. The XLK, for example, technology ETF was very strong. There was a huge inflows in SMH, the semiconductors, for example, that was around here. It was here? Here, so, so following um, um, the the volatility we've we've seen around the regional, let's call it the regional banking crisis in the U.S. And then I said, well, and what's currently not bought is, um, for example, consumer staples. So XLP, for example, so Walmart. So people are not looking for toilet paper right now, but they are looking for semiconductors. So that sounds quite bluntly, let's say, but... Um, Overall, it makes perfect sense to understand, well, there's obviously appetite for risk right now. And this is exactly what drove the Nasdaq higher here, in my opinion. I think that was just a matter of time. But the question now is, um, what is this run built on? we currently witnessing here so this acceleration in the uptrend what is it built on is it built on the expectation that in the second half of the year the fed will potentially cut rates because well what we have certainly when looking at the market in general we are looking at the discounting mechanism right so having a discounting mechanism means if you get the news then it's already nearly fully baked into the price um, or it should at least be fully baked in the, into the price else it would be a surprise so that being said, means, okay, if we have um, now 
a discounting mechanism and the market pricing in a more dovish stance from the Fed, but the Fed does not deliver the more dovish stance, well, then we are potentially headed for a larger bounce. Because if, if, if the reason for this drive higher can be found in market participants betting on the Fed cutting rates in the second half, well, then certainly if they don't cut or is, if, if they cut, but not as, as aggressive as the market is expecting, then well when well then we are potentially headed for for a bounce and then and, and, and a sharper pull in if if still if you if you um um see now the market having priced in some dovishness but there's more dovishness and then we have to answer the question what is this more in in terms of 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 like how how does it um, display in in the fat statement especially well then we're we could potentially um, um be around another squeeze higher on the upside um so that that's in fact uh, right now the question is to bring us to today's topic so coming to the presentation once again um so it's very interesting to 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 see here what about right let me just let me just change that a little here so then yeah it's clearer now um, so what do we have here? So it's the Fed watch tool. I already um, 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 shared the link via the chat box. And um, what we have here is each column is representing um, the target rate. And with the percentage points above that, the likelihood with which the market participants are expecting that target rate to be seen at the end of the year. So this is what the Fed watch tool delivers. One second, please. Let me just open that here once again. So we are looking here at the Fed Watch tool, and there you have several tabs. So when we're talking about market expectation, this is especially true when looking at such an event like the Fed. I want to know what is the market expecting, because then I have an idea. I can formulate a bias. And if now there's a news release, like a target rate decision in case here next week, and the Fed is now hiking rates, um, by 25 basis point, I can say, well, this is certainly not what the majority of market participants is expecting. Because based on, uh, this is from the CME, so the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, um, it's a futures market and or options market in this case. So what we are looking here is, um, you probably have heard about the Greeks. So there's, there's certain components to options um, like Delta, Vega, Gamma, Rho, Theta. And um, what these models do is, Based on the pricing in the market, they extract these Greeks and then they calculate what is the likelihood of market participants expecting this and that in the future based on what we see here in the data. And then they display it that way for market participants. So the Fed Watch tool right now says with the likelihood, given what we are currently seeing in terms of pricing in quotes um, in, a, in, in the futures market, in the options market, well, 74% of market participants expect the um, um, Fed to pause. So 500 to 525 basis points, um, while still around 25% are expecting the Fed to hike rates. Again, this is the futures market. And the thing is, this is not necessarily a directional bet. It could also be that market participants are hedging their exposure. So just imagine you're right now heavily long for whatever reason, because you you picked the, the, um, um, the pattern correctly. You saw um, the risk appetite building. You saw a potential breakout higher in the NASDAQ. And now you want to lock in some gains, but you want to keep the position. Since you're expecting, we are probably expected to, to head higher. Um, and you're already in the market, um, let's say, with, with your with your core position and what you wanted to invest. So you have a big fund or something like that. And now you want to hedge this exposure. Well, you can then go to the options market and, for example, sell puts. Uh, I'm sorry. No, sell puts is wrong. Uh, you can buy puts. You're not selling them. You're, you, 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 you're not selling short, but you're buying puts. So you're, you're like buying an insurance if you want, if the market drops. So what you're then seeing here is that the market participants right here are probably saying, well, we lock in some, some gains. If there is a surprise rate hike, well, then we are, we are hatched at least at, um, for some of our exposure or long exposure we're currently holding here. Um, so this is something you, you have to take into account when looking here at these charts. But still, the market is expecting with the majority there won't be a rate hike. So... You can simply say, to answer the question, um, are we due for a significant correction? Well, if the market, oh, uh, no, put it simply, so we can say higher rates are usually not good for equities. 
due. Oh, that means nothing more than, um, okay, we hike rates, equities should drop. That's simple speaking. Let's see if this really happens. But um, this is usually what you will think of. So that means if you're then buying here some kind of puts or I don't know, um, 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 if you're if you're if you're for example um, buying uh, puts on 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 treasury notes for example because you you say okay well expect rates to push higher which means treasury notes will drop in price for example. Long thing short, this is this is probably one of the reasons you you get to see this. You pay a small premium for this for this hedge, and then you'll see what happens. And if it doesn't happen, well, you're probably meant to to move higher. The problem with that is, um, it's not about will the Fed hike rates right now or not. Oh, I think to some extent it is. But what's more of interest for us is what's happening in the second half of the year especially given what we're currently with nesting. Some of you, unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot anymore. And by the way, let me just, before we before we continue, I just have to, to um, write down some information here for my for my trading today. So once I, 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 I finish the webinar, um, I'll head over to, to, to trade equities. So that's the reason why um, I have to, to write this down because I have afterwards then to document my trading. If there's any trades, um, then I, I want to make sure that all the trades are documented well so that I can review them in detail, depth, and with all necessary information afterwards. And therefore, I have to type in the gap and here uh, the, the, the pre-market volume. But now coming back to the presentation. So, so what we're having here um, is now market's expectation and what we don't have anymore is where did we stand last time respectively where did we stand um, um especially in march and if you remember there was this regional banking crisis and the market was the future market here was aggressively aggressively pricing out um um a restrictive stance respectively what the fed communicated what did the Fed communicate? So if this is the futures market, this is not the Fed. Um, this is what the market participants expect the Fed to stand in terms of, of rates at the end of the year. But what did the Fed communicate? There, we are looking, and this will be released next on Wednesday too. We are looking here at the economic projections. So they're offering each quarter an outlook on where do we stand economy wise what does it mean for our outlook um, um for for um our our rates at the end of this year next year and so on and so forth and this is ex exactly what we're looking for here so when they release this economic projections statement in march as you can see here this is the so called fat dot plot and the dots represent one fomc member a, a voting member for the fat and they ask them Okay, where do you see the rates at the end of 2023? Where do you see rates at 2024, end of year 2025? And then they give their, their um, 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 statement here. And then you say, okay, each dot represents one FOMC member. And the majority, obviously, can be found at 500 to 525 basis points. And the interesting thing now was that back then in March, we had an expectation the, the Fed to cut rates down to 400 to 425 basis points, even below that, given the tensions we've seen in the banking sector. So there was a huge divergence. So the Fed is this, the Fed is saying at the end of the year, we are at 500 to 525 basis points, while the Fed watch tool, the futures market is saying, no, you're not, you can't. Um, because of the tension in the banking sector, because of um, all the economic pressure we are currently facing. So you have to cut rates. And the market is pricing in the rate cuts. That's interesting because now have a look here. That was around, yeah, here, around the year. We we, we drew, pushed aggressively higher, especially in tech stocks after this, this corrective move. And then when we broke above 12,000, 500 around and closed higher and shortly below that it was only a question of time because the market obviously priced in a hawk a dovish stance so rate cuts which is positive especially for tech stocks and then it makes sense but then the market started to let's say how can i say that um take a step back and think about this that's probably a good way to put it um and 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 how do i how do i tell that the market did exactly that well look at where we stand right here 
So here now, the majority is expecting the Fed to stand at 500 to 525 basis points. So the market is now saying, okay, the Fed is correct. We probably were a little too <laughs> expectful. I don't know. So we, we expect probably too much in terms of rate cuts. <coughs> and uh, now the market re-evaluated the situation and now is standing exactly where the last economic projections stood respectively the fed told us they would stand at the end of the year it's not that the fed isn't wrong completely opposite go back in time you can just change the date here in the pdf you can look all the economic projections and look for example where we stood here in uh 2022 let me just see was it no which day was it? Was it the 18th? I'm not really sure. We're going back to the, no, 19th. I have to look the state up now. 20th, 20, 21st. You will, you will love really hard. You see that now. Okay. Let me just check the, the calendar here. I just, um, March. 16th okay 16th enough so they, these were the economic projections in march 2022 okay at the end of the year you remember we stood at 450 to 475 if i'm not mistaken um, yield uh, rate wise that is what the fed expected back then where we stand at the end of 2022 here so that was the majority some 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 market participants came higher a little we, we were expecting 175 to 2%. So we were more than double um, in terms of rates because they underestimated the inflationary pressure which would build over the um, upcoming months, which is surprising because these should be very smart people. And what did they expect to happen with inflation if they lock down countries while well, they pumping in liquidity to an extent which has never been seen in um, a mankind and, and in human history before? So like this is, this is economics 101. Um, however, this is what they expected. It's not that they're not wrong but they were massively underestimating inflation, for example, and thus had to re-evaluate um, um, their stance here. And, and so it's not sad that they probably um, won't do that again or have to do that again this time too. But if they come here at this level and probably there's some rhetoric stating, well, we looked at the job market um, and we think we're still in an economic favorable environment. And even if, if inflation does not come in significantly below 5%, um, we have to hike another um, um, 25 basis points rather sooner than later, um, just to make sure to keep inflationary pressures under control. And in addition to that, bringing back inflation over the course of the year 2022, probably, to our um, 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 target of 2%, inflation tar target of 2%. If they come out with such a rhetoric in such an environment, in the market, again, right here, as you can see, well, we, we continue to trade higher, even though the market was pricing in um, this, to be correct now, that the Fed will stand around 500 to 525 basis point at the end of the year, which is usually not positive for equities. And we continue to trend higher. It mainly now depends on what will the rhetoric be. So will there be any kind of communication towards like, yes, there is a chance that there will be another 25 basis points. Not today, probably not in three months from now, but probably in to the end of the year due to the inflationary pressures building them from whatever area. Probably due to um, um, oil prices, for whatever reason, continue to trade higher, or the economy, uh, economy respectively, the employment situation stays um, robust, for example. So plenty of reasons. Um, inflation is not coming down, and core inflation stays elevated. Um, um, PCA deflator, for example, um, um, the the, the um, um, favored um, um, gorgement of, of, of volat um, um, inflation from the Fed, for example, um, is still showing significant inflationary pressures whatever the rhetoric might be, this would be very, well, I wouldn't say devastating, but it's definitely something which should be considered bearish. But, and now this is the thing, and now we want to focus on today's price action. We're into the, the um, 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 Fed event next week. So 
the expectations are there. And, and we're currently witnessing probably the start of, of, of a move I, to some extent, expected, to be honest. So what do we get now? So the market probably shouldn't expect a too dovish stance from the Fed next week. But still, we are breaking now, looking forward into this Fed event, we are, we are breaking higher. And the question I have now is, can we hold this breakout if we can hold the breakout, let's let's just see. I mean, there was an initial drive higher, so this is now a five minute chart. Let's see if we if we after let's say four p.m. Probably four p.m. is a good time. If we can break above these highs we just marked, so the open range high. If we break above four thousand three hundred and six, I could imagine that the S and P is potentially headed higher, and up to here the region around. For 320 probably on the upside. So there's probably another 10, 15 points on the upside. And we are sucking in some market participants who just think, well, it will be an equity-friendly Fed meeting next week on Wednesday. So we're sucking these people in. They're now buying the breakup because they probably um, um, missed out on the trade mainly here. Let me just, by the way, check where we stand. Okay. Um, whatever. So... They're buying the breakout, hoping that now they will catch another big leg up, which is probably the beginning of a drive up to the March here, March highs, which we which we uh, rallied to, by the way, given um, the Fed state um, um, a meeting we were just looking at in the dot plot here, <coughs> around 4,600, 620 or something. So we're sucking these people in. And then they realized, hey, there's no follow through. There's no buyers anymore any here up here because the risk reward is also getting more unattractive. So we are looking a little extended on the upside, um, which could then result in a reversal. So that means currently, right now, in the right, right here, right at this time, if you ask me, um, if I go long or short, I'd favor a long setup, break above these highs here for. 1306 up to 4320 or something but i trade this as a so-called momentum drive so i'd be very aggressive with my stops and I'd, I'd manage to stop likely on a five probably even on a one minute chart and just looking for these um, drives higher um and 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 try to profit from the momentum drive higher but carefully watching the price action especially um um in the in the spider in this case so the spider is the etf on the s&p 500 and there i um, um look at the volume we're seeing especially if we get to see an extended move on the upside up to 4320 and if we then spike or stuff into these levels and roll over stuff in yeah spider well let's see I'm not really sure about that, but if, if we get to see such a move and then a rollover and we drop back below the volume weighted average price in the spider, that could be an interesting um, spot then to after having traded the momentum drive higher, then trade a reversal back down below the breakout region, which can be found here around yeah 4,300, roughly speaking. So a pull in back to 4,300, and then probably the starting of a larger corrective move, even though large is, is relative, I'd say. Let's let's first of all see if we if we test here the region um, of this trend line, which is established and probably finds a potential target around 4,240, 4,250 points on the downside. And let's see whether we can we can we can hold this this um um nah. Trend line in this case, so this is quite a strong trend. Um, probably in the in the Nasdaq we have <clears throat> a larger pull in probably, but also here um, this depends a little. Um, I I'd like to play this in fact in the um, S and P five hundred. <clears throat> Not really um, willing to to play this here with the with the Nasdaq. Um, but probably also here um, if if we break above that level. The same would be true for a momentum play in the Nasdaq. So if you trade a break higher, if we continue to trade higher, uh, which is surprising, I, I have to say, I have to admit, um, I'm, I didn't see that coming yesterday. So this is now a five-minute chart. You probably have seen that. That was the the rollover um, here from from uh, June seventh. So we, we 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 spiked higher. Um, that was on on Wednesday, and then we sold off quite aggressively and and dropped and closed very weak. And I was about to expect further weakness 
um, even though I wasn't shorting the, the queues, but I was like, hey, if we close here above, or sorry, uh, below, below this, this area, let me just probably highlight this. Um, probably, probably I'm, I'm highlighting it with a, with a, um, with a rectangle. That's probably the best way to put it. So this area here, that's probably better thought. So, and we are breaking below here. These were the NFP lows. Um, I'm all I'm sorry. Yes, um, and and we're closing here below that level. That's that's a bearish sign, and I expect further weakness to come then on the day after that. And we didn't follow through on the downside, and it would have been, it would have been quite interesting to see the follow through because if we drop down here for fourteen thousand two hundred two hundred fifty, well then we're headed potentially for a retest of this trend line which can be found around um 14 yeah 14000 around 14000 we haven't seen that in fact yesterday bias stepped in against 14250 pushed us higher and now we are about to see another um attempt here to break to new yearly highs this, this is this is extraordinarily strong but still, I'd say we are quite extended on the upside. So if we get to see any kind of, um, if we get to see any kind of, of of rhetoric which is making a potential further rate hike a topic, or if there's any any signs, um, when it comes here to the dot plot, for example, that um, we are we are probably seeing more from these dots here 500 to 525 wandering up to 525 to 550 for example this could be a bearish trigger which is especially bearish negative would be especially bearish negative for um for for tech stocks especially after after the recent run higher and the quite extended mode we we get to see on the upside i'd say um the question what what you go would you go long on um if the dot plot especially drops below five percent so if if um the fomc members the voting members here um um take down their the expectations um for the 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 rates at the end of the year to be low five percent if there's the majority to be found which is unlikely to be honest um but if if there's such a drop below that level that would be that would be another catalyst to, um, um, for, for, for the long side. Let's see whether, whether really like it's bought. This is the next thing. So you, you're, you're formulating um, a table and you're saying, okay, I expect the Fed rhetoric to be neutral. Okay. Given the recent run, neutral rhetoric is mainly priced in or also neutral. You have to define that what's neutral in terms of the dot plot, for example, um, in terms of, 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 of the rhetoric being used mainly priced in so you tend for the short side if you get to see an initial flush lower but then we are bought this is not a sign of weakness even though it should be priced in obviously it's not fully priced in and thus and thus you you should favor the long side then you say okay um if we get to see a hawkish rhetoric next scenario you're playing okay hawkish rhetoric what what does it mean well pause right now but we continue hiking rates or we are discussing that if inflation does not come in lower which is especially true since the day before on tuesday we have inflation data so if inflation data then shows any signs of stabilizing or probably a spike yeah a small peak back above five percent or something like that um which seems unlikely but still let's let's assume that this will happen well then usually you would say, okay, that should be bearish. If you see a bearish flush, but then buyers step in and push us higher, this is extremely strong. So you have to, to um, um, think about several scenarios and how they could play out. What would be a sign of strength? What be, would be a sign of weakness in this case? If we are selling out um, and we keep on holding lower, well, then we are obviously potentially um, 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 good for a larger bounce, a larger corrective move on the downside. But this has to be seen. So we, we have to, to wait for the confirmation of the price action. What I do is, again, I'd formulate such a table for me and then I'd, I'd, I'd go through this and I'd say, okay, if this happens, then this should be expected. If this doesn't happen, is this a sign of strength or weakness? What do I do then? What do I expect for the DAX, NASDAQ, S&P? Um, is are these my my favorite um, place? Or probably we are going back from equities and looking at something like gold, for example. So gold is also in a very interesting range right now, going to the the hourly chart. Also here, very unattractive, uh, choppy sideways. So we sold 
were sold on the um, NFPs. Let's go here. So there we have this range. So that comes out dovish, whatever you might define dovish, like dovish is reducing the dot plot, rhetoric, pause, we continue to pause till the end of the year, whatever it might be. Well, you should expect gold to push higher on that, US dollar weaker. So you expect 980 to break and hold. <clears throat> and then taking it from there. If we see any kind of, we'll pause now, but we continue to hike rates um, since inflation is still elevated and we're not even in, in, in reach of our inflation target on the downside. Well, we should expect a break to the downside in gold. If we break out of the range um, and see a fake out on such a news, but then buyers step in, well, it could be a sign of strength. So you, you really have to define all these um, um, different scenarios for you. And the reason you have to do that um, is because you might come to another conclusion that I come. And also, once you're in the action, you completely forget what you what you what what you haven't written down and are not prepared for so it's like you you're then in in the moment um and and if you if you don't know what you look for and how to interpret news then things get really really tough let's say so that's why why um and preparation is key here and and going through this table and writing down each scenario um with in which asset you plan to play it another play um, um is potentially interesting when it comes to um yields is dollar jpy for example in the fx market and then formulating declining your um um um, um I'm not really sure if, if this is the right word. In Germany, it's, it's declinian. It's like, yeah, define. So define each um, 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 scenario here and then taking it from there. So I hope, yeah, I hope you feel prepared now. Um, and uh, all the best. Happy trading. Good luck with the Fed next week. And we talk again next week on Friday. And uh, then we, we will see what the Fed delivered what we can do, not just um, what we could have done training-wise, but also what to make out of this, probably from a swing perspective for um, um, a longer perspective. Um, and how markets reacted in general. So that's it for my end. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. And happy trading next week with the Fed. See you.